Welcome to Israel. To the Minister of Defense, my good friend, Secretary of Defense of the United States, Dr. Ashton Carter. Welcome. This is not your first visit to Israel, nor is it the first meeting between us. And this is your first time here as Secretary of Defense. Over the years, you have proved yourself a true friend of the State of Israel, and someone who makes Israel's security a top priority. There are few people who know just how great your contribution has been to the security of our country, as it has mostly transpired behind the scenes. Yet, your contribution is the very essence of just how strong the relationship is between the United States and Israel, and between the defense establishments of our both countries. The scope and depth of the relationship between the defense establishment of the United States and Israel is unprecedented. Between the Pentagon and the Ministry of Defense, between our armed forces, intelligence agencies, and defense agencies. There is no better friend of the State of Israel than the United States of America who provide us our strategic backbone. At this very moment, as we stand here, the United States and Israel continue working together on highly sophisticated technological ventures, joint military trainings, and other cooperative projects. This morning we met for a long discussion on the situation in the Middle East. And afterwards, we flew together to a strategic vantage point in the north. The nations surrounding us are falling apart and are being replaced by a multitude of terror organizations armed not only with advanced weaponry, but with murderous ideology. These terror organizations most unfortunately kill innocent people and strive to aim their weapons at the State of Israel and other allies of the United States in the region. This situation demands all of us, United States, Israel, and other nations, to act wisely, responsibly, and soberly, to identify opportunities, and act together to vigorously combat these threats. We must prevent the evil powers, including the merciless terror regime of Iran, Assad regime, Hezbollah, Hamas, and the global Islamic Jihad for further igniting the already inflamed Middle East. My dear friend Ash, the United States and Israel both share values and shared interests. Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, is a thriving and blossoming country in a violently erupting region. Quite a wondrous achievement. We in Israel, as in the United States, value human lives, the freedom of expression, and equal rights regardless of religion, race, gender, or sexual orientation. We must continue to fight together for these values and for a better world. If we continue to work together and continue to strengthen the special relationship between the United States and Israel, we will succeed in this mission. Even the deepest divisions, and there are such differences of opinion between us, will not impact our great friendship and solid relationship. We greatly disagree when it comes to the agreement with Iran and fear for the future in the aftermath of its signing. Yet, we discuss this issue in a fully open manner, alongside many other issues of great importance. Our relationship with the United States is a core pillar of Israel's defense. In the name of the people of Israel, in the name of the government of Israel, and Israel's defense establishment, I would like to thank you for your unique contribution to the security of our country, and to thank the United States of America, led by President Barack Obama, for being our greatest friend. I hope that you will enjoy the rest of your visit as a fruitful visit in our country. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Yellon, my friend. I've been looking forward to this visit. I've been here many times before, and we've been planning this trip for quite a while. So it's great to be back with our friends in Israel. I want to space, space a special tribute to Minister Yellow himself. As a soldier in the Yom Kippur War, then many years later, as the IDF's Chief of Staff and now Minister of Defense, he's played an integral role in Israel's security for generations. As we discussed earlier today, while we were looking over the Israel-Lebanon border, it's also something deeply personal to him. I greatly admire that, not just as a counterpart, but as a friend. I'm told there's an old Hebrew saying that translates into English as, place guards around your city all day and all night. That shouldn't surprise anyone who knows the many threats surrounding Israel, one of which, as the law, we just saw over the northern border. These threats are why guards are placed around this country all day and all night. From the soldiers we visited up north, to those here at Kiryat, to those serving along all of Israel's borders. Like generations before them, they stand watch all day and all night. And as it has been true for so long, the closest of allies stand with them. The United States are important. That's why I'm so proud to stand here today with Minister Yellow, because we've been with you from the beginning of our state, and we always will be. Israel is a cornerstone of our strategy in the Middle East, and its security and qualitative military edge are a top priority for America, for our military, and for me personally. That's especially true when it comes to preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons, which the deal reached in Vienna last week which is a good deal, is designed to do. Friends can disagree about whether it will work, and we'll be watching Iran very closely to see. But there's no disagreement <coughs> about the ultimate objective. We cannot let Iran have a nuclear weapon. <coughs> and there's no disagreement about the threats Israel sees every day, from Iran's destabilizing activities, from terrorists like Hezbollah, Hamas, and ISIL. That's what I came here to work on with Minister Yellow, the problems faced by both our nations and our overall strategy in this region. Make no mistake, this deal limits Iran, but it places no limits on the United States, the Department of Defense, or the U.S.-Israeli defense relationship. We're moving full speed ahead. Deterrence remains a major part of our strategy. We're continuing to bolster the security of our friends and allies in the region, especially Israel, to help defend them against aggression, ensure freedom of navigation in the Gulf, and check Iranian malign influence. And we're continuing to, to advance our highly sophisticated military capabilities that, as an insurance policy, the President has long stressed to provide all options to Iran to violate this deal. Meanwhile, our pledge to defend Israel remains rock solid. And after years of unprecedented efforts to strengthen Israel's security, the U.S.-Israeli defense relationship has never been stronger and will continue to grow. Let me be clear about what this means. We will maintain a robust force posture that lets us rapidly surge an overwhelming array of forces for the United States and all over the world to help defend Israel if needed leveraging our most advanced ground, naval, and air assets, married with sophisticated munitions that put no target out of reach. We will maintain our ironclad commitment to Israel's qualitative military edge, which I've worked on personally, and which I know President Obama is also profoundly committed to, so that Israel can defend itself by itself from any threat. And we will keep providing advanced capabilities Next year, Israel will be our first and only <coughs> friend in the region flying the F-35 stealth fighter. We will maintain our vital support for Iron Dome, which last summer had a 90% success rate and saved countless Israeli lives. We will maintain our contributions to the David Sling and Arrow systems that will shoot down longer range rockets and ballistic missiles. And we will maintain the readiness of our alliance which we hone through training and exercises together 
every year. This is only part of what the United States is doing for Israel security. And as Minister Yellone and I discussed in our meeting, if more is needed in the future, then we'll do more. Going forward, we will ensure that our forces and the unmatched power they bring to bear remain kept at the ready. We will continue standing guard together all day and all night. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary of Defense. We will start with the questions. Uh, Alan Ben David, Channel 10, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, yesterday the uh, National Security Advisor talked about an unprecedented package aid to Israel following the deal with Iran. Could you explain to us what this unprecedented package means? And to the Minister Yalon, Sarah Bitachon, there's a Israel who thinks that the support and the support of you to serve the Jews and the Americans in this stage of the support ולנהל מערכה כנגד הממשל הזה בקונגרס, תפגע בטיב חבילת הסיוע שנקבל אחרי מערכה. Well, we talked uh, today about uh, quite a number of steps to strengthen our mutual security. From missile defense, which I indicated, to qualitative military edge, to such fields as cyber, uh, joint planning, and we discussed our joint contingency planning for various situations uh, on Israel's periphery, uh, including the one that I got to witness firsthand today with Minister Yalon in the north, uh, Hezbollah along the northern uh, border. Uh, the only thing I'd say is that uh, uh, this is an important set of advances. It's not actually unprecedented because this is the kind of thing that we have done for decades. Uh, my own view is there's a lot more than that. <coughs> Uh, and uh, that is the United States view, uh, and that we will continue in that tradition of improving our joint capabilities, improving our joint readiness, improving our, our, uh, our joint planning. And that's what we were doing today. That's the whole reason uh, for my visit, which, my, which as I said, is a long plan one. To the question, <coughs> we haven't stopped any projects working together, and of course, ongoing work between uh, the Pentagon and the Defense uh, Minister here, and between the US Armed Forces and the IDF and all fields. We do have now to go through staff work, uh, looking very carefully to the impact of uh, the agreement with Iran, we believe that Iran is going to be strengthened by conventional uh, capabilities. No doubt that the proxies around us, like Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, other uh, apparatus that Iran is trying to deploy in the Golan as an example, we have to look at it very carefully as we believe they are going to get more money in the current situation. And of course, we look very carefully to the accumulation of weapons in other countries in the region, to include friendly countries. We have to look at it very carefully, and I believe to, to the end of the year, we come out with our uh, uh, staff work, with our conclusions. Uh, so the work has been started. Next question from the U.S. Press Corps of Iran. Laurent Barthélémy from Agence France Presse. Uh, I would like to ask both of you, uh, Secretary Carter, you have mentioned uh, the, um, uh, the contingency uh, planning, uh, notably uh, for Syria. Um, I would like to, to know if you could give us a sense of what, is, uh, what are the different scenarios, what, how is, what is this contingency planning, particularly uh, uh, if, if you think there is a risk that uh, after uh, Assad's regime uh, fall, uh, there is a risk of uh, Hezbollah taking over the, the border, uh, the Syrian border with Israel. Thanks. Well, uh, we did discuss uh, events in Syria. I mean, obviously, that's a great concern to both of our countries. Uh, and uh, it's not confined, although it certainly includes uh, the uh, fate of the Assad regime. Uh, 
Syria is at this time overrun by lots of different groups, uh, Hezbollah being one of them. Uh, and there are victims in Syria of all kinds. And uh, that's a concern that we in Israel fully share. Uh, we did discuss that uh, in some detail uh, today. And uh, even though we were up on the border with Lebanon, all you have to do is cast your eye a little bit to the east, and you see the border with Syria. So Israel finds itself right up against this tumult uh, to its north and its east. And that's why it's so important for us to remain aligned, both in terms of our capabilities and in terms of our plans and um, uh, intelligence and other information that allows us uh, to protect ourselves and one another, which is what our alliance calls for us to do. We believe that Syria is like an egg which has become omelet. There is no way to make egg from an omelet. We don't uh, see any chance for unification Syria is a solid, unified state as it was in the past, in the coming future. And uh, as we can see now, we have already cantons, enclaves, Alawistan along the shore, Syrian Kurdistan in the north. Uh, the Druze are concentrated in certain area in the south. And we have many Sunni elements, like IS in the east, to the east, uh, Jabhat al-Nusra, and former uh, Free Syrian Army militias operating now together this coalition from Jesh fatah in the north, in Idlib, or in the south, in the Balanites. Uh, we have very clear policy. On one hand, we don't want to interfere. I don't believe that Israel can contribute by saying that we are uh, supporting this side or we are against another side. But we keep, we keep very carefully and very clear red lines, which are well known in Syria and beyond. We don't um, allow the delivery of sophisticated weapons, especially from Iran via Syria to Hezbollah and other organizations. Of course, we don't allow chemical agents to be delivered to terror organizations, and we don't allow any violation of our sovereignty, especially in the Golan Heights. When it happens, we act. So I'm not sure what will be the future of Syria. It's quite difficult to predict, but for sure, chronic instability is going to characterize Syria for a very long period of time. First question to Secretary Carter. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, Minister Yalon said on the record that the main disagreement between Israel and the United States is we see Iran as the problem and the United States sees it as the solution. The problems in the region, do you agree with this assessment? Does the administration see Iran as part of the solution? And a uh, question to Minister Yalon. Uh, we are seeing already that the United Nations Security Council has decided to approve the agreement. European countries are sending ministers and business delegations to Europe and Iran. Do you really think that even if the American Congress votes against it, the deal can be rolled back? Well, with respect to your question, uh, first of all, about I Iran, uh, we are concerned about the threat from Iran. What the so-called deal does, which is a good deal, as I said, because it, it comprehensively and verifiably removes this source of threat and uncertainty in the region. However, as we saw on the northern border today, there are other concerns emanating not only from Iran and its um, uh, destabilizing behavior, but other uh, threats as well, which ISIL is a, another that is uh, very important to us uh, also. So that's the very reason why we work together as two friends and two allies in a region that is 
filled with dangers and threats. Uh, and um, uh, we've worked for decades together uh, on those. And they're not confined, unfortunately, to any one particular one. Um, but the solution lies in our strategy. And at the cornerstone of our strategy is the defense of Israel and the support of our other friends and allies in the region. And I can add also uh, freedom of navigation, um, uh, countering uh, malign activities, uh, including by Iran, aggression by all parties, and of course the tremendous problem of, of, uh, associated with ISIL and its various uh, affiliates and uh, like-minded terrorist organizations uh, in the region. So there's plenty to do for the United States and Israel, and that's what we've been doing for decades now. That's what we'll continue to do. With the approval or with the disapproval of the agreement in the Congress, the Iranian regime is going to remain a messianic, apocalyptic regime. His aspiration for hegemony in the region, fighting especially the Sunnis, but both of us are considered by this regime as Satan. We are lucky to be considered as a minor Satan, not because of bad Satan. Nevertheless, Bearing it in mind, uh, there are certain issues to be discussed and dealt in the coming future. The terror fire of this region. We are talking about a regime which actually involved in any conflict in the region, not in almost any conflict. By supporting, in most of the cases, to exclude the fight against ISIL. They are on the other side by supporting Hezbollah, by supporting Hamas, Palestinians, the Islamic Jihad, by supporting every party, whether it's Shia or Sunni, ready to challenge Israel. And challenge American interests as well, like in Yemen, or in Bahrain, or in Saudi Arabia. And we are not talking about terror, terror infrastructure. In South America, in Asia, five continents, uh, they act there. This is inspiration for hegemony beyond the Middle East. So in this regard, uh, these issues are not over anyhow. And we have to deal with it and make sure that we co cooperate on these issues in the near future. And the final question from the U.S. Press Past, 
is present time will be in the future and it will be enhanced in the coming future. Thank you. There will be no more questions. Uh, thank you, Secretary, thank you, Minister.